Matthias Muralitharan is a legend in these parts, and with a world record 800 Test wickets, that should come as no surprise. We were lucky enough to spend a day with him as he gave us a bowling masterclass and once again made NASA look a little silly. But we started off learning about the important charity work which he is heavily involved in at the Foundation of Goodness, north of Gaul. Could you just explain how the Foundation of Goodness came to be? Well, you know, in uh, 1999 is the time we established the Foundation of Goodness. And at that time, only Murali and another friend of mine called Ashan Malasekara, uh, three of us, started this. But before that, you know, I've been here for a long time, uh, although I live in Colombo. The reason being that I was able to study in Colombo at Ananda College. And then when I came back to my village, literally, I see so many kids, youth and women, here, much more smarter, brighter, cleverer, skillful, talented than I was. And then I realized that they didn't have the opportunity, the training, the facilities and the exposure to get ahead in life. So I vowed one day um, that I'm going to come back to the village and do something to make them excel in life and elevate their standards. But it started so basically, i.e. shoes, giving them shoes and things like that. Yeah, so when you go to a school, uh, especially a rural school, you, you embrace you know, all the challenges and you encounter everything that they don't have. For example, you know, not wearing shoes to school, taking one book to write eight subjects, yeah. um, then not having a proper square meal. So parents not having electricity in their homes, not no pipe borne water. So then you attend to one by one and nothing multiplies so much as kindness. It all changed and made, became very difficult in Boxing Day 2004. Now that's the, the tsunami watermark. How far away are we from the beach here, would you say? It's about 150 metres. So that is how high, and it just swept through and took everything in its path. I mean, yeah. Horrific. Yeah, I was one of those uh, who was, uh, you know, like a victim, may I say, but I survived. Maybe I'm destined to take this course. Uh, but Murali was halfway down, and he was very lucky that yeah. his fiance was joining from India, and that delayed him. Otherwise, he would have been 15 minutes earlier. So he was very fortunate to be intercepted halfway and sent back. So when the tsunami struck, you know, the first waves came at about three foot level. So we still had some time to get away. But the second one after 20 minutes in our village, you know, came 30 foot uh, waves later. So that's where it settled as you see the watermark. You showed us round. Um, we saw a, a cooking class over there. The ladies were learning to cook wedding cakes to help sell in the local community and get themselves yeah. up and running. A computer area over there, which I'll come back to, but the, uh, the nursery kids, yeah. I mean, they were fantastic. Yeah. They put on this, this dance display for myself, Nass and Rob Key. Yeah. And they had the, a little smiley face on their unit, with, on their uniform with, you can. Is that yeah. right? Well, what is, uh, what yeah, is that? you know, it's to give that positive kind of uh, message that, yes, I can. You know, that's how, you know, we have to be trained from our small days. Uh, it's not to brag, but if I didn't say yes, I can to everything that, you know, benevolent and compassionate, kind people offered, uh, we would never have got what we wanted. Well, that was brilliant. The computers, though, yeah. that's got a significant thing because the, the people, the students that have worked in there and got their qualification there yep. are now providing work for the hotel chain yeah. that we're staying at yeah. in Colombo. Yeah. But that means, but they're staying here to yeah. do their invoices, is that right? Which means that the money is coming out of Colombo and going into the surroundings. Is that the idea? Absolutely. Uh, it's called the business process outsourcing or a knowledge process outsourcing. So uh, the biggest conglomerate in Sri Lanka, the John Keels, you know, you're staying at Cinnamon Grant. Mm. You know, we, they outsource uh, some of their um, invoicing, so like supermarkets, hotels, bank reconciliation to us. And there are 30 girls working here. And like you say, they don't have to go to Colombo. They are well within their families, improves the quality of life, uh, better for the foundation of goodness. Half of them are on scooters now, you know, and it's a brilliant story, win-win for uh, everybody. So, and showcasing that model, we've now got an American client, you know, uh, Synergen Healthcare, who has come. And uh, another 30, 30 are basically involved in outsourcing now here from here. You've obviously done a brilliant job yourself. How big a part that has Murali played in, in helping generating interest, using his contacts and yeah. pulling Yeah, I mean, up. Murali's, uh, you know, role uh, is hard to describe. He, he's a, an amazing individual with a great heart, so humble, very considerate. And I'll tell you, even as we speak, 
you know, he said Sky Sports is going to give us a donation. And he said, you know, it's all for the Foundation of Goodness and not for me. And then every time he appears uh, for some question and answers or an endorsement, he would always tell me, Kushil, this is for the Foundation of Goodness. That's the man he is. So I'm very lucky that I had this opportunity to work with him for 20 years uninterrupted uh, from 1999. Uh, and, you know, then he appointed me as the manager and I've still survived. <laughs> so he, How difficult was it to still survive? Well, he's a what was he like, what's he like to work in day and day? Because um, you've been through some real highs, but there's been some con controversy yeah, on yeah, the way. Yeah. So, you know, with Murali, first you have to be a very patient listener. <laughs> Uh, so I mastered the art after a long time not to speak until he has finished even if it's one hour. So uh, and he's, I think a lot of people agree and there's a joke that goes around that you know if you were able to manage Murali for 20 years I think you can manage the current president of the United States. <laughs> you've, done, you've done brilliant things here, thanks for your time. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Yeah. Now, we've done a little bit of filming at your school, which is just uh, down the road. Explain about this place, though. Now, actually, uh, after tsunami, uh, this uh, whole place was destructed and nothing left for the people. So, Kushil Gunasekar, my manager, so he had a house. So, he's donated to this for the uh, uh, centre. So, what we wanted, uh, funds, so to build something. So, what we did is, especially because of cricket, I have got everything. So we reached the people who can help us, MCC, Sare, and same way in Australia as well. These two countries got together and put these centers. So MCC has done, Sare has given this ground, and MCC also given a ground. Like a lot of sponsorship has come. And personally, through Neil Fairbrother, I got a lot of, lot of English players. They donated through him. A uh, lot of players, because I can't name it, so many players, <laughs> the pool has come. And also keep their coming to play cricket here. They fund these places. Still MCC and Tesco, so many, so many things. Because, because of cricket, it has happened, everything. And we could give it to uh, the people who can't afford to play the game and also afford to uh, do their lifestyle. We have given something to them. That's why, because the cricket has given everything to me. So I try to do something for them. You've also got rock stars involved. How did Brian Adams end up giving you a swimming pool? <laughs> yeah, Kushil reached everyone to US uh, when the tsunami happened, how we can develop this place. With these connections, he got Brian Adams somehow. So with my connections, I got all the cricketing people to come and help. So, so many people who played with me helped a lot to put this, put this down. Just to be clear though, where we're standing now, Boxing Day 2004, mm -hmm. underwater. Yes. Well, how far away are we from the beach, would you say? Uh, almost one kilometre. One kilometre it came up. Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> when did you first start playing cricket? What was your first memory of playing cricket? Uh, actually, I uh, started with uh, softball cricket when he was, I was in hostel, age of six. So seven and eight, we used to play with the kids. Uh, then my coach said to me, to, I'm good enough to play cricket, so come in for hardball practices. So age of seven, eight, I joined. Then I started player as when I, I didn't bowl spin at all because came around and bowl fast and batted a bit. And then age of 13 I started bowling spin because coach said you are not strong enough to bowl quick, so try something bowling spin. So I tried off spin and. Worked. And did you spin it that far straight away? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because because I, I didn't know my action until I realized I saw first time ever on TV. It was I would say. What age 7 to 18 when play Har Premadasa Stadium? We played a, some the floodlight tournament 18 19. Then only I knew I also found is unusual because for me, also people who thinking a lot of people who thinking unusual it's a fair doubt because they have to think, but at the end of the day, they have to give me a fair chance also mm -hmm. to prove myself whether I'm doing wrong thing or not. So that's what I asked the ICC so many times. So when I saw me also. I said, how can I bowl like that with the wrist and everything? When the it's first time you saw it on TV, TV what did because you think? I, it, when you're playing junior cricket, there was no cricket, TV, anything. And you think you bowl like normal as others <laughs> in, in the mirror. Because once I saw in the TV, it's so different to others. 
How difficult was it going through all of that time with the ICC? I mean, I did a feature with Professor Jacqueline Alderton, who you yeah. would know then Western, at the University of yeah. Western Australia. Yeah. I mean, you went there several times. Yeah. That process to continually having it doubted, to continue having to go and get tested. Yeah, because it's a stage like 95, it started all. Then I, 98. Uh, then again in 2004, the Dusra. So it was process for all my career till 2006 also I went through. So like that, it's a period of about 15 years. Uh, see, for me, it's nothing to hide. Even uh, uh, I bowl every time without a long sleeve, with a short sleeve. I can show my action, whatever, because for me, I thought I was not doing, I'm not throwing, I thought, and I want to prove that. Yeah. So that's why whoever want to test, I said, willingly I went. Even in camera, I went willingly because I knew in my mind I'm not doing. If I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing, don't they have to explain to me? Then I can correct it. If I'm doing something yeah. wrong, then I can correct it. But when we tested in the last time, first, uh, the degrees didn't appear. So the ICC put a law of 5 degrees and a 50, uh, 10 degrees for the fast bowler. We, then when I checked my dusra, it went like 10.4 or something. Then we went through lawyers and said to ICC, it is very unfair. For a spinner, why are you giving 5% and you are giving 10% 10 degrees to fast bowler. Fast bowler can hurt a person, yeah, okay. spinner can't. You yeah. can't, it should be dangerous. So then um, uh, Richardson said, okay, fine. What we're going to do is, in, we're going to check all the bowlers. What is the situation? Then from England, uh, Paul, Harry and I think, and from Australia, uh, two uh, mechani uh, that's, uh, biomechanics. biomechanics came together and did it in, I think, in ICC World Cup. So when you're doing from outside, there is a error, about 10 degrees here. So they come up with giving the error to the chance of the bowler and came up with the bowlers, most of the bowlers they didn't want to name, but most of the bowlers are, like fast bowlers are, they are 12, 13 degrees. Then they said, humanly, you can't take advantage until 15 degrees. That humanly, not possible because technology went so long. Uh -huh. And uh, you can kill even one person going, like, you know, 15 degrees, people think it's like this. No, it's like, like this yeah. small. After 15 only, you can take advantage. They came up with a law. So the point being is, you can bowl with a bent arm. You're just not allowed to extend, extend it. it by yes. So if you put your, if you drop your arms down, yeah. That's the natural, just turn yeah, side on so we can get it. See, that, is, that doesn't, yeah. that's locked, I'm locked. pushing, that's locked. 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 So you can go at that degree, Yeah. it no. looks... No, what happens is when you're bowling, you have to come this position, okay? This position is locked in. Yeah. So ICC only to looks at this position to delivery position, this but you, curve. you can't actually straighten your arm any more than that. No, no. So, that, so what that happens is, is, when is his arm as straight yeah. as it... So what, what happens good. is when you do this, sometimes, you arm without knowing there will be a bent more. You see, I have 34 degrees, but it can go up to 40. That what happens is it up to went up to the degree bent. They look at it at this end, and for me it's bent close to 10 degrees more than 34 to 44, right? So when I come here, when you go in your bowler, you can't keep it bent like that because whatever the extension has to happen because otherwise you can't deliver the ball. So that 10 degrees, that's what say when a bowler comes and some fast bowler from here, he, he won't straight it full at this position. He will have a slight yeah. slim bend. It wasn't one of the reasons as well that they changed it was because they said that fast bowlers arms come over so much quicker. So you've got to allow more degrees if you yeah. like. But then you worked out that your arm and other spinners arms come over just as quick as a fast bowler. Because a fast bowler, because delivery doesn't go, but you rotate your arm fast as your yeah. fast bowler. Some spinners, because put so much of effort, the rotation comes, but the ball goes slower. So because you slower, because you're spinning the ball, from here it controls the speed, the speed of the ball. So not only fast bowlers delivers straight. They want to quick as possible to deliver. We will try to spin the ball. When you see your action, in fast motion, mm -hmm. it looks doubtful. Yeah. When you see it in slow-mo, you actually see a lot of your effort and your spin comes from your wrist, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Sh show so us what you can do with see, the wrist. See, see, what happens is, uh, my wrist, see, normal off-spinner, okay. if you take a ball, 
normal loss spinner will have this like this and it bowls this way. It, my one is like this. That's your off spinner? Yeah. It comes this way. So then 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 it it comes like this. If you see the camera, it comes like this way. Right? So normal loss spinner will be this. So that's why it's like a leg spinner, the spin gets. Yeah, yeah. Right? So then one advantage because of this is bent and our, I have a little bit more advantage in the shoulder. See, if you can see it's small. See, I can turn like, like this, it's normal. And I can do the same thing and from here, I can bring it like this way. From the shoulder. Oh, is that your deuce for them? Yeah. From the shoulder, not the wrist, I won't, I won't turn the wrist. I will turn the, like if you go faster, like this, those right. Should we bowl some? Can you show us how you, yeah. you still got it? Just basically, show us the basic grip then yeah. uh, for your it's, off it's, spinner. It's a normal grip as any um, a spinner or spinner does. So only thing is I deliver with the wrist. That's the only difference between me and a, um, a normal off spinner. But I do sometimes the variation. So what I do is, you say shiny side is this. It's not shiny enough, right? We'll say, so we have to hold always rough side rather than the sunny side because to keep the ball, to curve the ball. So for me, bowling with this grip, it won't curve. It will go, it's like a scramble seam. Right. So if I want to curve the ball and get it, then I have to hold like, like a seamer. I so hold that's like, how you get your swing? Yeah. Then I bowl like this, it comes. Then only the seam comes this way and goes. So the batsmen are clever. Right, so I learned from Marwan. Marwan was very good at picking things. He says, if you, from the seam, I will pick you where the ball is going other way. So I want to hide that. For that, what I did, some balls I bowl with the seam to give the batsman a look, and those are also like look. And then when I hold like this, uh, normal off spinner, it goes scramble. Then batsman doesn't know which way it's going. So those the variation I did and. People would have said, people, people say, a lot of people say, I have to, we have to bowl so many deliveries, it's not. It's most important thing in bowler is where you want to pitch, that ability you have, then you are a great bowler because then spin the ball. But if you can bowl one out and one in is more than enough to get wickets in any, 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 any cricket. But some develop slip uh, everything. But if you bowl too many deliveries also sometimes you can't set a field and also you will lose your uh, main delivery. That is the important. So you have to, the variation has to be variation in not every time, one or two balls in two overs or three overs like that. How did you learn the Doostra? How did that progress? Did you start by bowling more overspin and then could gradually get the ball moving? How did that, how did that no, Coach, actually, how long did that take? actually, I saw first time Saklin Mustak in 2000. Uh, no, I think uh, 1995, and he bowled the Dusa. We didn't know what to do because uh, people are getting out in that series. Then uh, I, sp I sat with him and asked, and he showed me with the finger yeah. because I can't do that because my wrist is like this. So how can I do that? So I started with uh, smaller length and bowling this way to go research. First, not bowling, just trying. And slowly, slowly, it took me three years to get into right length. And it was also very slower, and it went straight only. <coughs> then after that, slowly, slowly, I developed another one or two years time to a little bit faster and go other way. So it took about five, six years to learn that. So once I have that, so first um, ten, eight years of my career, 91 I started, 92. and. Um, 98 only I got, 97 only I got 100 wickets. But I didn't play many matches, about 25, 26 wicket matches because we didn't play. But from then onwards, once I developed the Dusra, I got about close to, I didn't get many wickets in Dusra, the showing the batsman to yeah. a doubt. Uh, I got about 700 wickets in about, <laughs> in, in, in about 10 years. So when you were developing it, you yeah. small little steps, you just throw it, at, sort yeah. of throw it like that at me? 
And that was just to get yeah. the feel. See, Tell you what you're going to do. Can you do that to me? And I want to stand next to the camera yeah. and give you, give you yeah. the viewers, a bit of an idea yeah. of what you're doing. See, when you're throwing off spin, like this you throw, to get the spin, like this. Boom. And that's all the feel you're yeah. getting there. Boom. So give us a big deucer. Hang on. Yeah. Give us a big... One more. Now, offy. Fascinating.